Some projects come together easy and just flow without effort. Some projects, however, take every last ounce of determination and mental energy to complete, and this was one of those projects. The YouTube tutorials have lied to you ladies and gentlemen. This process isn't always flawless and without error, and in today's video I'll be giving you the inside scoop on how I managed to complete this devastatingly difficult project. Hey guys, my name is Dean Samid, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned in to Photo Manipulation. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialise in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos Monday to Friday. It's free, easy and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video, enjoy. Okay guys, before we kick off with this one, I'm just gonna tell you right now that this won't be a hand-holding step-by-step tutorial the likes of which you're used to, but instead I'm gonna be talking a bit about the creative project and then showing you some of the main techniques that were used on this. This one's a bit more of a story time than a full-blown tutorial, but if you want to know the exact processes used for each step of this walkthrough i will add the links to the full videos in the description you'll find with a lot of us guys on the pm team we use the same techniques over and over again and we've pretty much recorded individual videos for each one of those techniques so if you're a newbie you're really welcome just check out the uh, links in the description and you'll get all of the individual processes so this book cover project here is for a buddy of mine, David Simpson. He is the author of the Zombie Road series, one of the biggest zombie franchises in publishing. He's got a lot of support in the um, horror and zombie communities. And the basic premise is, is that truck drivers scrounge and scavenge all different elements to create um, armored or fortified trucks. Now, the first cover that I did for David in 2017 is this one here. We used um, an illustration as a reference. So this was the kind of illustrated book cover, um, which wasn't really suitable for the audience. So what he said was, can you take this basic principle and create a cover similar? So that's what I did for the first one. So he's had great success with the series. It's done really well and now he's expanding into different markets so this book cover here is the same book but for the german language markets and this is quite typical in my career i do a lot of book covers for the german language markets and the french markets as well it's work good work if you can get it so i knew right from the outset that i wanted to turn the dial up to 11 i wanted to massively one up the cover that i did before which was 2017 so that was 2017 and this one is today 2021 if you're watching this in the future so like i said in the intro this one was really really difficult now i'm just going to give you a heads up right now my main income is no longer freelance art or book cover art i'm mainly taking on book cover work these days to create content for the YouTube channel, for the photo manipulation YouTube channel. Um, so I'm afforded a bit more freedom than most other book cover artists. When I was a full-time book cover artist like Christian Bentelan, you had to ha put a time limit on how long you would spend on a project. But for this one, because I weren't dependent on the money from the gig, because I run the Neo Stock platform the majority of our income comes from stock photography so i could spend a lot longer on this project than what i could a couple of years ago or back in 2017 you had to get the job done you had to get the you had to get paid and you had to move on to the next one so this one was tricky um it was really difficult i struggled with the truck i struggled with the zombies i struggled with the background um, there have been artists that are much more skilled than I am pointing out uh, problems in the perspective of certain things. But when I put this through 
to the client he was extremely happy with how it turned out so at the end of the day if you have a happy client then you've succeeded you've done your job well um i'm fairly happy with it there's a lot of things that i would change but we'll dig into that as the video progresses so what i'm going to start off with is a basic breakdown of the psd and then we'll kick into the time lapse and i'll narrate over that and explain the different elements and the different techniques used so this is a little graphic that i put together um, that shows you all of the different elements so we have the base truck there we have the um, kind of grill thing from the steam train now when i was producing this piece i'd imagine what kind of elements will be accessible to the truck drivers if there was a big junkyard there was a train yard they could scavenge bits of military trucks off of old um, defunct steam trains and things like that so that's what pushed the direction it actually has a bit of a Mad Max feel to it. I cycled through a few different background options. I don't know if I'll cover that in the time lapse, but we have a city there, foreground there, smoke elements here along the bottom. Um, the stock zombies, we shot these in the studio a couple of years back, um, and I use these all the time because I much prefer photo stock zombies to CG zombies, what I used to use. Um, rendered zombies but they they've got nothing on these so i'm just gonna bounce through now to the gallery now this gallery is actually available on neo stock if you're interested we have a gigantic horror and post apoc bundle 34 sets over a thousand images um individual zombies final girls so if that's if you're interested in that then go ahead and hit the link in the description now before I move on, I have to give a shout out to my dad. He is the photomanipulation.com, our channel's biggest fan. Um, he was one of the most crazy and vibrant zombies on the day. Um, he, he was uh, comedy throughout the whole day. So I promised him I'd give him a shout out and immortalize him on the video by showing some of his awesome zombie shots. and. In the future, um, what we're going to be doing is turning my dad into an orc, a small little studio project. So we're going to get him in the studio and take some shots and then create an orc composite using his face as a basis because he is a massive Skyrim fan. He still plays it to this day. So that's a fun little project that we've got coming up. Okay, on to the PSD. Right so we have the truck base which was the basis we have the type here nothing fancy i've carried on the branding from the previous cover because that makes sense we want people to instantly recognize it's that series we have the hordes compositing left and right i'm not going to cover the breakdown in massive in depth um, we'll cover the main of uh, most of this in the time lapse now these final processing layers these are stamped layers and most of these have the oil painting process so the oil paint process you'll be able to find in the description below and then um, a bit of nick collection and then a final touch with selective color if you're not familiar already there is an awesome plugin it's probably my all-time favorite third-party photoshop plugin it's called Nick Collection. There was a time where it wasn't available. Now it is available again. I've actually tracked down the uh, company that now owns the rights to it. And because a lot of people ask, I'll put the link to that one in the description as well. I use ColorFX Pro. And then when you launch that, there are two things that I mainly use. Um, Tom Parsons got me onto this. Okay, it's not available because I was on... An adjustment layer let's try that again on an actual layer I'm just going to show you this very quickly because it's a great plugin and I use it for adding the final polish to my artwork all the time especially for horror artwork they have a bleach bypass filter that is amazing so I'm going to run you through this quickly bleach bypass there that's one that I use all the time and then another one is called pro contrast which is that one there which is has the the best looking instant contrast functionality that i've ever seen 
Um, when we get into the time lapse, we'll take a little bit more in depth look at that. So that's Nick Collection. I just wanted to mention that quickly. In case you weren't familiar, it is a brilliant plugin and I use it for most projects. This one is bog standard adjustment layers. So we have a gradient map there. Um, this is a trick that I stole from Clinton Lofthouse. It's a black and white gradient set to luminosity and it adds a bit of a cinematic punch to the overall image. Color lookup, I don't think I actually use that one. Um, if I did, it was only light. I never, ever, ever use color lookup. I, watch, I saw one of the other guys use it in one of their videos. So I just copied them, thought I'd give it a go. Selective color is one that I use all the time. So selective color, that's um, that, that added the majority of the global processing tones. And we call this global processing because it's not selectively applied to anything. It's added to absolutely the whole scene. So we call that global processing. Um, I'm not gonna go through these individually, but we've got a load of smoke layers there. We've got the right zombie horde. We've got the smoke and lighting behind them. We've got the big old truck looking inside that layer stack. We've got armor, we've got lamps, plows, loads and loads and loads of layers on this one. Um, layer groups are essential because if you don't have layer groups, this would have been chaos and would have taken me twice as long. Smoke and lighting, hordes, 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 hordes. Um, the foreground floor vignette, and then we have this city background here with some processing and then the foreground floor. And that's the overall breakdown. I'm just gonna recover these elements. Don't need that mask. Get that back to its original state. So that's the basic breakdown of the overall piece. What we're gonna do now is kick into the time lapse and I'm gonna outline the individual techniques used to create this piece and some of the frustrations that I faced bringing this one together. We got there in the end, but like I say, it wasn't easy and it took way too long. So let's jump into the time lapse right now. So we start off with a lot of pen tooling. Uh, we want to remove the truck base from its background so there's nothing to ground break in there. Uh, zip round with the pen tool. I like to use selection layers. If you've seen my other tutorials, you'll see how I use a dedicated layer with its own path filled with white to use as a selection. So that's my preferred way of using a pen tool. Um, there's links below for my pen tool tutorials if you wanna learn all those processes in depth. So what you see on screen here is the different steam train elements being chopped out again with the pen tool. From time to time, you'll see low resolution images being thrown on and what we call this in the industry is comping. So you might have a low resolution preview on a stock image gallery. You just stretch it into place, uh, chop it out rough with a lasso, and then you can see how the element looks before you spend one of your credits grabbing that particular image. We have a team subscription that we share across the whole PM team, so we don't have to worry too much about stock credits like we used to back in the day. So what you see going on here is a chopped out wheel arch, and then the transform tool was used. So um, that's Command and T, and then I believe I used Distort for this one because it just allows you to pull those points in any direction that you want. This is a sneaky trick and I'm gonna do a dedicated tutorial on this one. It's where you can clone out or remove elements that you don't want, but without using clone tools. Sometimes clone tools are a bit too fiddly and don't really do the job. So a lot of the times you can just select an area and duplicate it and then cover up the offending area with the duplicated layer. You'll see from the distort that that lamp was a bit wonky. So I knew the wheel arch was in the correct position. Just went back to that lamp, cut out the lamp because I know it's at the correct angle and then move that into position. So that retains some of the illusion that this is correct and it makes sense. Now 
I mentioned time and again that this one was very difficult. The difficulty b behind creating this truck was getting all of the angles of the different elements to align. And I'm not going to lie, it was difficult. Uh, this, this piece took way longer than what it should have done. But you live and learn. It's all part of the process. Uh, the geometrics and the angles of all these different objects. It was tough getting it to look right. If you look at the front grille, um, the, the main uh, plow, uh, the black plow, you'll see that those footsteps, they, the perspective and the angles of those are, are wrong. And I actually deal with that by chopping out the offending elements with the pen tool, just so it looks a little bit more realistic. Like I said before, this piece wasn't perfect in the end, but you know, we, we got something workable. The technique for creating the shadows, uh, that's my go-to technique. I love to use a levels command and then selectively paint it in using that mask. Um, that's a, a levels adjustment layer, non-destructive editing. Like I said before, sometimes you grab comp elements and cut them out roughly with the lasso tool and position them in place just to see if it works before you grab that download and that's a process that I use loads. Okay, so I'm cutting around these pipes because I know I want elements to appear behind them or between them. So this is a technique I use loads. It's a selection layer and it's just filled with white. That basically means I can command and click on that layer at any time to load that selection without using alpha channels. I'm very visual, so I like to see the selection layer on the screen, on the layer stack, so I can just command and click instantly to grab that selection instead of going into other dialog boxes and options. It, it may not be perfect, um, other people may prefer other methods, but it's the method that I like to use. So this is the cab section. And as you can see, the original stock image was way too long. Um, it didn't really fit the geometry of the original truck. So just some sneaky tricks here, really. Chopping out the bits that I didn't want. You see that window there. We're going to get the curvature for that one just so it looks a bit more realistic and fits the shape of the original truck. And then that trick that I mentioned before, um, working or cloning out elements without using the clone tool i am going to do a dedicated tutorial on that a standalone tutorial a couple of things um, for that cab i tweaked the overall levels and look of it using uh, the camera raw filter which i love so there's that trick grabbed a bit of area that um, worked and then duplicated that moved it over to the area that I wanted cloned out and then softened the edges with a layer mask. Now, I haven't shown you a lot of the stuff that happened. I actually spent a long time cutting out each individual square on that window grill. Um, it, took, it took time, as with everything with this project, it took ages. I believe that that is being um, kind of angled into place using the distort tools. In the end, it didn't look 100% right, but it was workable. The windows, pen tool used, creative selection. I wanted them darker because it didn't look right having bright windows behind those grills. I wanted them to be a lot darker. So a selection layer created with the pen tool and then levels commands or duplicate that layer set to multiply just to darken them considerably. And a bit of shadow at the top. The shadow would be cast by that hood at the top of the truck. So we're clipping along. This time-lapse kind of walkthrough, it doesn't really show one-tenth of the trials and tribulations uh, that was went through to create this piece. So that comping method again, grabbing the images, using a lasso to chop them out and put them in place. Just think, will it work there? Will it work there? Um, transforming, rotating, tweaking to see what works. Again, my problem with this one, was the angles of things it, it, it was very tricky with the perspective of the truck getting the elements to look right 
I like the zombies on the left side, but the zombies on the right side, they're not really facing towards the truck. It was pointed out to me on Facebook, but as you know, you're going to get that with artwork. Um, it happens. And just a few sneaky tricks there. Zombies duplicated because I knew some elements. I just wanted the hands. All I, li I really like zombies with white eyes, so... The process used for the zombie eyes is my undead evil eyes process. I've done a dedicated tutorial for that one. Again, link in the description. Any one of these individual techniques you want to learn, we've done. I've done videos for all of them. If I would have done this as a hand-holding, step-by-step um, -step tutorial, it would have it, the video would have been 20 hours long. Um, and wouldn't really have been useful to anyone. Maybe one day for fun, we'll do one like that. But for today, I was just happy to get this one finished and to create a video out of it. So the light beams um, for vehicle lights, I like to make a selection of the light itself and then duplicate it loads of times and then set that duplicate to screen. And then you can use a soft edge brush and then manually paint on a color or a tone to add the, um, the kind of glow of that light so we have the smoke being brought in here and the smoke is just white smoke on a black background set to screen that's literally it and if at any time I want to blend it in it's a layer mask and then using a textured brush set to about 20% flow these stains um, these are fabric stains on uh, so red stains on fabric that I scored ages ago these stocks are so old I don't even have the links for them so sorry about that guys if you've got a colored stain or element on a white background you can change the layer blend mode to multiply and then use levels to brighten or darken the foreground and background the whites and the darks so we're nearing to the end of this one guys we just, um, the footage will show you a little bit of the Color FX Pro Nick collection. But because I use this all the time, I think I'm going to do a dedicated tutorial on this. There's two main things I use in here. That's Pro Contrast and Bleach Bypass. But there's loads and loads of stuff in there. It's a great filter. It deserves its own video. But this is the global processing at the end. The final touch. And there you see it with the typography ready to go ready to be sent to the client and yep it was a bit of a saga this one but i wanted to share the warts and all process so if you enjoyed this video and you got through right to the end guys congrats to you i've done quite a few of these uh book cover breakdown tutorials and uh, one that i'd recommend if you haven't watched it already is the seed of evil uh project breakdown so be sure to check that one out on the end card coming up right now. And I'll catch you at the next video. See you then.